Man, what's going on, guys? Another day, another episode. So today, as you see here, we have some back and shoulders. Okay, so with this back and shoulder workout, as I told you last video, I always start my workouts with pretty much legs every single day because I believe that the foundation needs to be built. When you have strong legs, the rest of your body generally is pretty strong as well. So today we're going to be talking about body shaming, fat shaming, and why being a natural in 2021 is so in quotes hard for some people. So fat shaming, body shaming, what is this whole dilemma? Everybody makes a huge deal about calling out the reality. If somebody is fat, we need to pretty much walk on eggshells and not remind them of their poor decisions and habits. Now, I always believed in turning misery to mastery. And my main upbringing, I was fat. <laughs> I used to be called Fat Albert because I lived in a white town. And I was consistently torched on a consistent basis for pretty much being overweight. 5'8", 210 pounds as a lineman is where I stood with my stature as a freshman in high school. Did I get down on myself? Did I say, hey, man, you guys are fat shaming and body shaming? Or did I get in my bag and did I begin to upgrade my programming, which is the way I thought, my habits, my actions, and ultimately my life? That summer, yes, 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 it was, was kind of drastic. And that is what taught me a major lesson that no matter what you do, when you try to appease other people, you still will lose. Until you become satisfied and comfortable in your own skin for your own self, you will never optimally become your best self. So I used to get called Fat Albert once more. They used to call me fat. Um, I didn't know much about nutrition, so I didn't eat much to lose a lot of weight. And I ran consistently. So yeah, I was a strong lineman. And what I did with my pretty much um, my journey to pretty much stop being bullied is I gained tons of um stress because i was in the catabolic state and lots of cortisol from running consistently every single day with very low malnutrition um focus so what i learned is you easily could go from being super overweight to super <laughs> super underweight where I then yes i grew to 6 1 138 pounds so think about that drastic measurement 210 pounds 5 8 to 6 138 so I went from pretty much being fat and overweight to being skinny and literally have my ribs um, protruding out on a consistent basis. And then the jokes came in again. So that's why I say you can't appease anybody. Just pretty much learn what you want for yourself. That could be aesthetically, mentally, spiritually, physically, and then set out to do it. I am so thankful that I was not in a victim mind state when I used to be called fat or when I further became skinny and was called Oscar Proud from the Proud family or so many other what in quotes would be considered degrading. I saw it as <laughs> I love these jokes because what they don't know is I'm a closet worker and that is really what bred my current mentality today. I'm a closet worker. Sometimes if I really did not, I guess, in quotes, motivate certain people, I promise you I'd be off the grid. In 2018, I completely got off of social media for two years, and that is when I really began to delve into meditation, mindfulness, and um, just becoming deep and gross in prayers in my communication and relationship and um, devotion to higher being. During that state, I was running so much while working a 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. job. Then I would proceed to work out again after, and I would do five-minute plank in the evening. I was just becoming a higher ascending being in real time so once you begin to like i say unplug from the matrix and almost <sighs> lock into who your inner core is which means it is taking out feeling taking out emotion feeling is today i don't feel like doing something because i'm tired emotion comes and goes so emotion is i oh my god i look like shit that's an emotion because let's say for instance i was fat and i was like i hate the way i look i feel like shit and then I were to pretty much level up where I am now, my mindset is different. So that's why I know emotion does not stay. Emotion is something for a time period and it always goes away. So don't ever think how you fail today is how you will fail tomorrow. Long story short. So yeah, 
I fully believe in fat shaming. I fully believe in body shaming, not because I am a negative, egotistical piece of shit, but because I believe that when you are told the truth, it almost allows you to face the man or woman in the mirror. A lot of us, we understand we have certain flaws and um, we don't like to work on it because humans love comfortability. But when somebody consistently puts it in front of your face, you have no choice because now you just are pretty much proving them right. If they say, yo, you're a fat, lazy piece of shit, and then you continuously stay with the same habits of a fat, lazy piece of shit, all you really did is prove them right. You almost had an unspoken um, agreement with each other that, yeah, you're right about how I am. Nah, what I used to do is I would run every single morning. I actually, it sounds so crazy. I would cry when I was training because yeah, anybody can say it doesn't hurt and they could put on a facade in a straight face, which I did. But deep down, it did hurt because I'm like, they're not going to violate me and I'm not going to get the one up. You feel me? Same thing with, 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 with pretty much relationships and um, having, let's say, a sister. My sister used to fry me. And all she really could say when I was growing up is, you're fat. And that's really it. So no matter how good I used to be feeling like I'm jabbing verbally, oh, I got her. Shut your fat ass up conversation done i can't say name back she's not fat you feel me so all these little things are what i call ammunition and that's why i am the way i am today my mind is so strong because when i was at my worst i still heard the worst and i live to see another day i'm not broken i'm reborn so now we're gonna talk about why being a natural in 2021 is so hard for some once more because i don't give a i don't give a damn if um being a natural would never equate to pretty much somebody who's on steroids i'm all about the long-term game right so if i do let's say my natural genetics and body and physique right now if i were to throw every single steroid in the book in my body i would blow up i probably would begin to look like these top instagram influencers at what price word short-term gratification i would look amazing i would get so many deals fitness um sponsorships but what is going to happen when I become old and decrepit and I can't stand for myself? I can't wipe my own ass. I die of a early um, morbid death just due to, you know, certain side effects of steroids and anabolic use. How can I look myself in the mirror if I have children and offspring and I'm in my bed dying because of a decision I made X, Y, Z years ago? So being a natural is so hard if your main goal is to try to compare yourself to others who are superficial and artificial, essentially. So why is it that everybody wants to compete? Why is it that everybody wants to be um, the next Chris Bumstead or the next Simeon Panda? That's because everybody wants what they have, not what they are going to receive. You feel me? We understand that steroids are bad because there's so many different things. Even look at Lance Armstrong. I read his book, um, My Way Back to the Bike. And it's so hard to read about somebody who is at the top of the fame, um, almost seem as a superhuman, superman in the flesh on a bike, and then to be literally brought down to the lowest state of his life, throwing up, praying to God every day he would wake up the next day when doing certain chemotherapy sessions and just feeling his insides dying. He said he was coughing up blood, <sighs> spewing out venomous, um, pretty much foul smells which is a byproduct of, you know, chemotherapy um, sessions. So to think somebody as high as high could be as low as low off of a decision he makes to honestly impress the next person. Yeah, you get some money, get some millions, but money always comes and goes. I am somebody who likes to live on ethics and morale, and I'm not going to give away what I would consider selling my soul for some money and, um, you know, temporary possessions and materialistic things. So being a natural for some is hard because they don't know themselves. I know who I am, and it was a long journey to discovering who I truly am. And I want you to begin to search for you, search for your true meaning, and um, more or less search for what makes you you. You feel what I'm saying? What makes you you? If you spend all your time looking at videos and other people describing what makes them them, and then you try to take what they're using and you're so confused and you try to put them on a pedestal like, wow, they're so blessed. I'm doing the same routine they're doing and it's not working. You know why it's not working? Because it's their formula, not yours. 
you need to search what is your formula and the best way to trial um to trial out different things to see what fits is to throw different things at the wall like i said this generation is so scared of trial and error i live off a of trial and error because i know at the end of the day i could try a million things and if 10 things fits my formula that actually begins to um, elevate my life for the better who gives a damn that i put so much effort into trying new things thank god i never would have stopped think about thomas um edison for instance right it, let's say for instance he's tried to get the whole thing with the light bulb is that his name jefferson Ed edison i don't know what his name is but let's say he tried to do the thing with the light bulb and didn't work we still be living in some medieval dark times thank god my man really tried ten thousand times for one solution for one spark of light thank god now do what much do what you must do for yourself do what you must do to find yourself and never give up on yourself those three things right there is always going to be a total um total compilation for your success lizzo that's another one we're going to talk about today um i just saw a post on her doing something with like how do you guys do in quotes what i eat in a day and look so good the reason why is once you have an idea on nutrition and even if you don't know about nutrition you just know um the laws of thermodynamics right when i was in college i didn't know about nutrition but i was stupid lean because i just put two and two together if i run a little bit further and i eat a little bit more food i'm still going to be in great shape so when they say you can't outrun or outwork out a, a bad diet that is crap you can very very easily in fact but it's not the best idea when you have an understanding on nutrition the only thing it really does is it makes it easier for you to um put off the weight for instance what i could have done and then actually gain weight at a faster rate i now just kept running and running and running whereas i could have just dropped my calories and kept the same pretty much um work effort and i probably would have been shredded to the bone a lot earlier but that's okay you live and you learn that's the name of the game and the old saying that will never go away So these last few minutes of this video, I just will break down pretty much what was the main intention and purpose of my workout. So as you kind of can see, if you can, let me inform you. I do lots of high volume um, with a few heavy sets in between um, my back and shoulder days. I first started after doing those Bulgarian split squats. I set out two sets of pull-ups, um, around 15 reps. 10 to 15 is what I usually aim for. Following that, I began to warm up my lats, and I did a um, pretty much like a face pull variation while seated, sitting on the ground and pulling it directly to my face for two sets. Following that, I did um, another very high set of, I don't know what to call those, I guess. Uh, um, it's not really a pullover, so maybe it's like a, a row variation. I don't know, but pretty much a D-grip handle. So when you do that and you bring it straight up to your chest and um, you keep your elbows as far back as possible with the row motion, your lats get so activated as well as your mid trap and your um, your rear delts. They get fried up. So I do two sets of those for 20 reps to make sure my back is filled with blood. And then I move to the lat pull downs and I start with 70 pounds and I go up by 10. Up until that point, I get to around like 140, 150 and I do those for 10 reps. Following that, I go over and I do some chest supporter rows um, with some dumbbells. You could also use a um, the machine they have at the gym. And with that, what I do is I do, of course, high reps. Really feel that squeeze, feel that engagement. And then I, at the end, do a drop set. After four sets of that, I do a drop set. And I do one single arm to 30. Following that, um, <clears throat> generally what I do is I go over to pretty much like the squat rack. Like I said, I'm just kind of remember what I did. I go to a squat rack and I do some um, shrugs, barbell shrugs, and I superset that with some ladder raises. And um, that right there is just a killer in itself for building a strong, thick upper back as well as very round cap shoulders. And following that, I um, proceed to go do two more heavier sets with behind the back shrugs, and then I go up in the weight with ladder raises and I do 10 reps for two sets. And then I proceeded to do on a stability ball some i guess you could say rear dumbbell flies following some kneeling front raises just to really fry those um those doubts 
this was a killer because after doing all those other movements i was so so sore and fatigued but what's the old saying no pain no gain and it is forever do more to be more that is my motto for life and if there's anything i could give you it is that forever do more to be more if you think you're not doing enough you are entirely right not kind of or maybe you are entirely right if you feel like you're not doing enough you're not doing enough because your body and mind would never lie to you when you get to a state where your mentality is do more to be more there's never enough there's always something else you could accomplish and um pretty much complete for your mental well-being so so do more to be more embrace fat shaming and body shaming stop listening to people talk about bullshit about how they don't care because i thank god that i care when people were disrespecting me for my weight both being overweight and underweight and being a natural is not hard in 2021 because you could be the best natural if you wanted to that's how i see it i'm somebody who wants to be the best at life not the best in the weight room because yeah the weight room is cool for an hour but what are you doing the other 23 hours of your day to become an optimal male or female that's what you need to ask yourself if you can answer that that is for your research and your homework for this next upcoming week as always stay great to be great and forever do more to be more like comment subscribe peace